Hi everyone, welcome to Type Talks. Today we're here with Dr. Dario Nardi, and he's here to talk about the INFJ subtypes. And so there is dominant, creative, normalizing, and harmonizing we will be going over today. If you are new to those concepts, feel free to look at the playlist below to get yourself acquainted with what we're talking about. Now, to go on to all things INFJ, I am curious, Dario, how does the dominant INFJ look like? So, um, yeah, there are four versions, just like we talked about with INTJ and, and with the other types um, that we can see in the brain imaging data. And uh, I forget about how many there are. I think there's, a, you, you know, at, at least 35 went into it, maybe 37, something like that. But I've had more since then, including one recently who was not dominant, but um Nonetheless, just to give people a slight bit of context on like how much data is there and, and so on. Um, I'm also going to talk about this one a tiny bit differently than with INTJ, because I believe that the, the third function for INFJ plays a particularly important role. Like that, that's not backed up by any neuroscience data is just like my general observation in, in working with these folks. With INTJ, third function, introverted feeling... I, I think it comes out more subtly and it's more in terms of relationships or something that's not quite in the public eye. Um, but that third function, introverted thinking, uh, does seem to play a role with INFJ and can sort of like maybe move their, the, 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 the flavor of their subtype a little bit. Um, so yeah, so dominant, uh, what does that look like? So in the brain imaging, this is a bias towards uh, the wiring in the front of the brain. This means a lot of like taking in data, especially auditory data, um, and then processing that really quickly in the executive region of the brain. So it's like data is coming in and making decisions. This doesn't mean um, extroverted, although they can come off as more extroverted. What it means is more confident and quick responding, uh, that there's this more... I don't want to say aggressive because, of course, we're talking about INFJ, but they the, the dominant INFJs tend to have a physical presence that's different from the other three flavors. Like you really feel that they are in the room and that there's this, you know, even if they themselves, they experience themselves as being open and so on, that there's this confidence and this assuredness that comes across. Um, and in terms of like what we might see that they're doing, uh, that they're they're very comfortable being somebody who stands up in front of a group that presents um, is an orator of sorts. Um, they could also be like an advisor or uh, even in like full on leadership position, uh, manager, whatnot. And there's this really good ability to like communicate and critique. Um, and that critique could come across of individuals, but I think a lot of times it's really about institutions. Uh, and about the group. So this is the the respected figure in the community who strives generally for integrity. Um, uh, obviously, individual character you know varies from one person to the next, but there there is this sense of like being comfortable being in the public eye, and and acting with that. In terms of the underlying functions. Um, the introverted intuiting is particularly visionary. They know what they're doing, where they're going. Uh, they, they feel like this, this willpower and this draw to follow through on what it is that they're doing. Uh, and then the extroverted feeling, even though it's in an auxiliary support role, not quite as strong as say ENFJ, um, that there's the shepherd quality. So that's when I say that they're very good at articulating, they, they have this confidence. They're like, this is where we need to go. These are the problems that I'm seeing along the way uh, with institutions. These are the things that can change. Like, let's have discussion about this and let me do the work uh, let, and help others and share the results of work that are helping us move in that direction. Like, what are the values? And, and many times it's actually quite a hardworking type. It's not just a figurehead. This person really is uh, a hard worker as well. Um, so, I, and in terms of the third function, 
you know, that also can have this uh, yin or yang quality to it. And I think many times if it's like really dominant, the introverted thinking is going to have this yang quality. This is like really strong certainty about the principles or, or like mental models, their philosophy of life. So if they have certain like religious convictions, spiritual convictions, political convictions, uh, you know, whatever those are, that they're going to be pretty rock solid with those. And then there's going to be this challenge is, is I think many times, you know, we have this idea of feeling types like to communicate. Um, I find that FJs are more about speaking and FPs are more about listening. Uh, and the data supports that. The brain imaging data supports that. Uh, and in this role, they are, they're good, like abstract language, the use of abstract language to think through things and to communicate things, um, including those ideas. And they're listening for um, how does this fit or how does that fit when they meet with somebody and, and they're critiquing as they listen even. Yeah. And this subtype is more likely to be confused for an extrovert if they're an introvert. So they're almost like the most ambiverted looking of the INFJs, comparing them to other INFJs. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So they could very easily be mistaken at first blush for ENFJ. However, when you talk to them, they're going to be like, oh, no, I need my recharge time a lot. Like that, I can think of one person in particular and how she really enjoys just going to the family cabin for a few weeks at a time. Not not the getaway with the the ENFJ is like, oh, let's meet, let goes with like a close family member or close friends, and we'll spend like a weekend at the cabin. No, no, no. This is like a three week thing to get away from all of their roles and responsibilities to like really recharge and to get really clear and and prepared for their leadership role. Yeah, it almost seems like the INFJ has to mentally prepare for that highly leadership extroverted time so they can do it. It's just they have to set themselves in the right mind space yeah. more so. Yes. Yeah. Got and, it. And, and, yeah. And, and and I feel like this is a quality that that comes out particularly, I mean, with all of the the INFJs, but I think NJs in general, that and introverted intuiting isn't necessarily about foreseeing the future or working with the unconscious, it has this third facet, which is about use of maybe extroverted sensing to create a, a space around them, like an environment around them that has like symbols and artistic inspirations and people and some like the nature uh, that can actually move them in the direction that they want to go. So it's really about bringing like the external environment and then the internal like symbol environment in alignment so that they get pushed in that direction. And I feel like the dominant type is particularly aware of the need for that. Yeah, the dominant type almost feels like they're more willing to shepherd and more willing to direct the group. Yes, All yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Cool. absolutely. And, and they're more willing to just like walk up to somebody and, and be you know, sort of like uh, step into the person, read the person, whatever it is, although they tend to be less sensitive in a way. They're not highly sensitive persons. Okay, let's get that out of the way. INFJ is often classified. Dominant INFJ, no. And and they are, you know, willing to just go up and talk to a CEO or some other leader, whatever it is, because they have that strength of character and that confidence. Yeah, I could totally see that. How about creative INFJ? So creative tends to be so different. I, I had a lot of creative, especially younger creative INFJs in the study. Um, and this shows up in the brain is this whole brain starburst pattern. So this really is about getting the entire brain involved and in whatever it is is doing. And they're very much attuned to what are my muses? Uh, how do I get and stay into creative flow? Especially if they're they're not just creators, they're also... I think tend to be performers at the same time. Um, and not just performers that blend into the group, which is sort of like ISFJ, creative subtype, um, that the INFJ is really, they can be the singer who get the lead singer who gets up on stage. Is that easy for them to do? They're probably only extroverted when they're on stage. Um, but there is this whole brain process and this creative flow. And, and the need to, in order to stay in that flow, and I sympathize because I have the same subtype, even though I'm INTJ, 
um, to push away the mundane demands of the world in order to be in that space. I can't be like constantly nagged by all these little things. Similarly, creative INFJ can be nagged by relationship things. And then if there are people who are sort of like putting them down or like dependent and needy, making demands, innuendo, like all of this back and forth, like a social stuff that can happen, like that can be a really big drag on, on the creative INFJ in particular. Dominant INFJ is more like, you know, e either looks past it, ignores it, or just like pushes that to the side. Um, creative is like, no, I need to nurture my space in order to, to make this. And if something negative does come in, maybe that will actually be incorporated into, maybe into the music. So I would say there's this, there, there can be this very both inspiration from the inside and a sponge-like quality on the outside, like having different experiences, going to different places, traveling. Uh, I know one who's a photographer, although many of them, I think almost every single creative INFJ did music in some way. Even if it was a hobby, it was a, a serious hobby because, you know, INFJs tend to not do things halfway. Um, either they may still be in the process of learning, um, but there, there's this uh, push forward because they do have this visionary quality to them. It's just when it comes to the value stuff, the extroverted feeling stuff, they're a lot more like, no, like my job is not to shepherd other people. I can inspire other people. I can encourage them through my creativity. But besides that is just like, ironically, I think more the relationship is more the close things that are just around them. Um, they, they tend to, I mentioned like the music and the travel tend to be cross-cultural. Really, really like I know one INFJ who's just, I don't know how long he's been traveling. I just know on Instagram it's just so many pictures from all over the world. Uh, my cousin is also like this at the beginning, just before COVID. Um, yeah, let, let me just start an around the world tour for two years and to take his kids along. Um, I mean, they weren't tiny kids, um, but there, there was this like, go on the adventure of life and, and their dopamine. So I, I think we mentioned hormones and some of the other ones. If the dominant comes across as sort of testosterone driven, creative is more dopamine driven and, and more like, I mean, there's a quality to it. It isn't like dopamine jumping out of an airplane, although they're probably willing to do that if their friends are doing that. Um, I just think that there, there's this, this joy of discovery that happens when, when in the creative flow, you're like, yes, this is it. Um, I find because of the introverted thinking they also tend to have like a really nice set of techniques to use in, in, their, in their creative process. So an example would be jazz musician. So yes, they can memorize stuff, but a lot of really for creative INFJ is finding like a process and a setup that allows them to create unique things that definitely when people are listening, they're like, oh, that's different. Not like bad different, like cool different. And like maybe sort of a little bit weird, different, but weird in an attractive way. Um, and so there's this element because they can draw on this introverted thinking set of techniques to be like, and, and especially with the extroverted feeling there too, they can work with other people creatively. So playing in a band with other people, having techniques to draw upon to do improvising. Um, and I think even if they're not that, if they're a teacher, for example, uh, they're still drawing upon techniques as a teacher and love to like be in flow in that. Even, even as a teacher, they feel like with the class, we are in a creative process and who are our muses and let's discover what we want to work on. And, and that's, um, well, being, you know, caring at the same time, there's a, like a certain warmth that comes across, um, and a certain rebelliousness for, for the subtype, for sure, like definitely a little bit rebellious. Yeah, and the, this is the subtype that I come out as in Dario's brain scans. Muse is one of the words that stick out a lot to me because I actually want to be amused to other people. So it's almost like I want to be able to inspire something mm. out of others. So, And this subtype almost seems like 
This is the INFJ who you might sometimes wonder, oh, are they a P? Are they an INFP? Like they're, mm -hmm. it's the perceiver flavoring of the subtypes for all of the types. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and uh, you know, for, for those who happen to know interaction styles, if the dominant comes a across as a little bit more of the in charge style among INFJs, uh, or in comparison to other INFJs, the creative is more the get things going style. So let me help you get things going. And they can appear at times more extroverted and at times more perceiving. I wouldn't be surprised, Joyce, if you've been mistaken for an ENFP at times. Just saying, yes. Yeah, that's possible, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially in the public, the, the stage persona, in a way, yes. Yeah, I think stage persona-wise, it would be more possible. It's just funny, like, if people know me in real life, they'd be like, oh, no, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm glad that I would be able to give off that facade for a little period of time. That's, yeah. I, I feel like that's an achievement. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And there's also normalizing INFJ. I'm curious about your thoughts on this. Yeah, so um, there's actually a fair number of normalizing INFJs. Uh, and you know, many people do need to lead uh, more conventional lives. Let's say we're looking at uh, INFJ who's age 40 with uh, children and married and uh, in, in like a middle-class community. And they also need to be an INFJ at the same time as doing all of the sort of conventional things. So what we see in terms of the brain wiring is this more, if you imagine like in an airplane looking down and you're seeing a bunch of farm fields. And so everything is a little bit connected to everything else. Um, and at the same time, they're still going to favor regions of the brain that are more involved with creativity and, and noticing patterns and symbols and making hypotheses and so on. But that's more like, oh yeah, like I have a room in my house. It's a little bit different than the creative subtype, which like basically wants to do a house party and the normalizing, which is like, yeah, in the mansion of my life, I have a room that is my creative room that I've put aside. And then otherwise there's like, you know, the, the kitchen and the room with the kids and so on. Um, so this type comes across as more conventional, more mainstream, um, more, uh, I would say also skeptical of the like woo woo kinds of interests that sometimes INFJs are associated with. They're not gonna use uh, the sort of like stereotyped INFJ language. They understand it. They're like, yes, I get it, but I'm not gonna do that. And certainly if they're many times working in a big organization, um, they know that kind of language doesn't fly anyway. And they probably had enough exposure to know also, unless there's a way to transpose that into something practical, then what's the point of it? Like it doesn't put bread on the table. So, so how, how do we do that? So they're going to do things like, yes, they, they want to be inspired and they have their small muses in life and they have their projects. Uh, and those tend to be more hobbies that are in addition to their main work life. Um, I would say something that stood out for me is that in in reviewing them, um, the importance of the role of family and community, um, and then that's how they're they're acting in a way as a shepherd, and they don't necessarily have a big vision, okay. And in terms of the the yin and yang, their introverted intuiting is actually this more like yin kind of introverted intuiting, which bubbles up a lot of small things, and allows them to be present and sort of like be an oracle or a medium for each person in their life that they encounter without that being uh, like any kind of main role. Like it just sort of comes naturally. And then what they see is like, yeah, but I have all of these people, like my kids and the, my workmates and spouse, and, you know, relatives and community members to help shepherd them a little bit. Um, and, and there is this... Uh, I find also because this is more of a left brain subtype along with dominant, more introverted though. And, and it's more about specializing, more about supporting the group um, as opposed to leading it, that, that there is this analytical comfort with technicalities. And again, this is where the third function introverted thinking comes in. So people might be really surprised to discover that this INFJ, for example, could be a technical editor. 
like they read science uh, submissions and say popular science news articles or, or even like a journal articles and they edit those. They have a passion for what science represents, like they value it. And at the same time, they're applying their language skills, like thinking about their audience and they know that like the standards. Um, and this is the, the subtype that's most focused on and like who is most respectable and like how do we like how do, how do we honor that respect? And so they're going to be the one who's like, well, which are the most prestigious schools to go to? Which are the most prestigious journals? Uh, what are the most prestigious social circles? Um, whereas the creative subtype is a little bit more like, eh, like I do my own thing. And if anything, they're going to disrupt to that. Um, and this one is the one that the, the normalizing is probably the most concerned with things like social status even as they are still like that, that dominant introverted intuiting, that, that element is there. They also have the, the last point I want to make. Um, and this was something that came out in the sort of like thinking about the people who, who've done it and in the interviews, because we sort I sort of interview people, you know, I'm like sitting with them for 45 minutes or whatever, um, that, that they have a lot of stamina. They have a lot of endurance to get through stuff. And I think this is also something that they're, they're not fragile. Like they have their moments, of course, and there is the self-consciousness. There, there is this like, and I say self-conscious like EQ applied to themselves, but they're really able to hunker down and to be like, how am I going to get through medical school? Well, I can't be a wallflower or like this very sensitive person to make it through medical school. So like, let me figure out how I'm going to do that. And, and that means probably connecting to a lot of different things, like having the support of their family and their friends, making good colleagues with their other students, um, valuing, like, again, why do I value medicine? And like being clear on that, knowing that they worked really hard to get like to, to the most like prestigious position or school or whatever that they could get. Um, and, and so they can actually be quite tough it's just that the toughness doesn't come across in an extroverted way. It comes across in like, I've suffered many times and I'm bounced back each time. Fascinating. Prestige. I wonder if that has to do with their inferior extroverted sensing and the luxuriousness that's associated with NISE a lot of the time. Mm. The sensory prestige there. Mm -hmm. All right. And so this INFJ seems like it's the one to be most likely confused for a sensing type. So perhaps. Mm -hmm. Oh, is this an INFJ or ISFJ? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and in, depending upon their job role, especially if it's something more technical, they may easily even think, oh, am I INTJ or something similar? Um, I think that the judging quality will come through quite closely because in the interaction styles, sort of borrowing from that, they're the most chart the course like of all the INFJs. Um, but yeah, they, they can be confused for sensing types at times. It's almost like the most guardian-like or stabilizer-like INFJ, the most SJ-like INFJ you can get. So Yes, yeah. Very cool. The spectrum exists. Mm -hmm. And so how about the harmonizing INFJ? So the, the harmonizing... Um, uh, so this is... This is how, how does it show up in the brain? Like, we'll start there. Um, is this one that has a, a lot of sort of like zigzag patterns and um, which are just like regions of the brain that cut across the hemispheres and back and front. And, you know, there, there are some connections between regions that are very common amongst people and others that are less common. And the zigzag is often a whole bunch of like unusual and uncommon connections. Uh, or, or they have full on like diamond shaped patterns, which is like, four, five, whatever, eight different regions that are connected together that work in a very sort of sophisticated way. I don't necessarily want to say specialized, uh, but the, the sort of true, but sophisticated. Um, and like most types, the diamond pattern is what's something that shows up more often for people midlife and afterward. But a younger INFJ might still, is, is anybody have this pattern? Um, and they have sort of the, the yin version of, of their favorite functions. So it, what, what kind of introverted intuiting? It's an oracle style of introverted intuiting. It's, it's very intuitive. 
uh, and sort of vague and abstract and, and the world of archetypes and energy, um, thought patterns. Um, and, and then the extroverted feeling is the supporting host. So you could imagine someone, for example, who's like a therapist and you go to this therapist and they sit with you and the therapist is creating a host, like they want some tea and you, they, each person, they get comfortable with that person and they're not there to, to direct you like the dominant one into what they're doing and what they think is valuable. They're there to help you support you as, as in the role of a host, like at a dinner party, everybody has, you know, their special needs and what food they're going to eat and interests and who sits next to whom at the table. And what, what special moments do we remember from the past, uh, that were very meaningful. Um, this is the definitely, and I think the creative version sometimes too, but this version in particular for INFJs could really be like for every one of their clients, close friends, associates, they could write a unique, beautiful poem for that person if they wanted to. Um, and then they interact with people in that way. So, and even the introverted thinking tends to be something that's not rigid. There's no one right answer. There's like, or right technique. There's a whole set of clouds. There's constellations of techniques. So to go with the therapist example, um, they could be using a little bit of type and a little bit of Enneagram and a little bit of cognitive behavioral therapy and a little bit of inspiration from Freud. But over here, we're going to take from Jung and then Adler. And, and they, they really, uh, if the introverted thinking is more developed, so they have more of those diamond patterns, it will be more sophisticated. And then they are going to get into stuff like helping the client find ways to manage their own mind which is almost like, let me give you some of the, the introverted intuitings power so that you too are the, talking to the client are not just like the, this like flotsam and jetsam on the sea of your psyche. Um, no, it doesn't have to be as sophisticated as that. It can be in the role of a diplomat and then diplomats know a lot about interacting between, uh, you know, like a different uh, nationalities and cultures and the different needs that groups have. Um, uh, of course, also in romance, like with every person being able to meet that person in their own unique way, uh, to be able to think of like the perfect gift that goes with it, uh, this event or that event. And they're also the version that's most likely to be highly sensitive and to be easily drained. And, and this is where the highly sensitive person, INFJ, a little bit normalizing also, but this version is definitely a in the space and why? Because this is the subtype that is more reflective, more receptive, more um, sort of like that antenna that is open to everything that comes in, both internally and from the energy of other people. So I, I know someone here who, um, I'm not quite sure what she's doing like right now, but at least before COVID, uh, I mean, she worked for a number of years as a, um, uh, psychedelic, uh, integration coach and, uh, which is just a fancy term. I mean, she actually did her training in the jungle, um, in Peru and, and every person you go through, like they're just going through this, like, I, I don't want to say horrendous, but like very challenging, like super energetic process and to meet each person in their place where they are helping them. And then standing back from that and being like, okay, now I need to move to the next person. Like, how, how do I clean myself of that and take care of myself while also like going on to help the next person and, and being present with each person is needed. So I think that's where the sensitivity comes in and the need really to do like a lot of, of like energy and psyche management stuff to, to make sure that they themselves in their role as advisor, as mystic, as yoga teacher. Uh, and they would never, by the way, just be someone who just teaches yoga. Like, no. I mean, remember, they're still introverted intuiting. It's going to be an innovator to some extent. And they're going to combine like, yeah, we're going to do breath work with it and essential oils. And also there are these uh, maybe like creating retreats for people. And oftentimes it isn't an individual, it's small group and facilitating the small group. Um, so it was almost like, not just body mind practice, but like a shamanic kind of role. 
and and although I say like it could be small group, they probably shine the most like one on one. Yeah, and I'm also guessing that other types that identify as highly sensitive people might also be more likely to be harmonizing subtype as well in general. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's quite funny in the brain scans. I'm actually creative first, and then harmonizing second, so it shows up right after. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually creating a in person retreat that is a different kind of retreat. That's a small group kind it, that is small group tailored so mm -hmm. uh, you got that spot on right there yeah. Dario yeah <laughs> yeah and so I'm curious about traits that INFJs all share in general regardless of their subtype um, mm -hmm. and your opinion on that yeah um so there's a couple ways that we can go there I, I think the standard way to do it is to talk about the function stack like dominant auxiliary tertiary and so on um, and, and that's fine. I think though, that's sort of like a parts approach, like let's put together these three Lego pieces and see what we have. Um, it, 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 in particular for INFJ, and, and I say this from experience because I remember going way back when Linda Behrens and I were working on what we called the Brown book. So this was like interviewing 64 people. So it was four INFJs and then condensing that down to a first person representation, like first person conversation. What is it like to be you? And like in their own words, that type took more, INFJ took more time than any other because we, we sent out the result, we sent out what we did, you know, collating and condensing it down from like four hours of stuff into one, like, well, really four pages of a book, something like that. Um, small book. And uh, it, it took a lot in order to to really like capture the the uniqueness of INFJ knowing it's among if, if not the rarest type in the population and at the same time INFJs also have this introverted thinking that comes out and is like oh that's not quite the right word um so we would really have to think about it and i spent longer even in the the teaching tales book where there were stories of each the, the first INFJ just flowed out very easily. Cause I know I, INFJs in academia and like, I and sort of know this type of this character that was there. Um, and that came out pretty straightforward. And then the second one, I, I, there were no stories that I had to rewrite like three times, except the INFJ. And for me to get close to, to representing like in sort of the, the fullness of the type, the complexity, the subtleties of the type that are there. Um, as for the themes, you know, I, I think we can just even read some of those themes and, um, here we go. Uh, I, I'm picking up a different book, but I, you know, these are ones that Linda Behrens and I have used for a long, long time. Um, it's just focusing on foreseeing and developing. So that could be developing the organization, but oftentimes it's about the people in the organization. There, there is this Cassandra effect that many people are aware of. The INFJ says stuff and that's very prophetic. And people are like, why are you being negative? Or how would you even know that? Or no, that's not the case. And then lo and behold, a year later, 10 years later, whatever it is, usually on spot and time-wise, if, if many times it even comes sooner than the INFJ said, then boom, it happens. Uh, and nobody listened. Um, so there, there is this foreseen talent, and um, I think it's it's the ability to sustain this vision for themselves, for their family, for the organization, whatever it is, for the client, while at the same time balancing the needs of the individuals who are there. More than, say, ENFJ. More ENFJ is like, unless the ENFJ is specifically in the role of being like a facilitator for a one specific client, INFJ is like, but who are you? Like, let's give the feedback to you and you as a unique person. And then also the third piece is helping them grow at the same time and managing all, all of that. So it's not just a vision for the person. It's like, what is their potential and helping them grow into that? And many times the, the growth happens in a creative way. And as you mentioned with the muses, wanting to, to both help the person realize their own muses and, and 
Uh, of course, like appreciating others, like, you know, what, what, what better is the sign of growth than, than more satisfying relationships? You know, that, that's usually a surefire sign that the person has grown um, past some issue. Um, I know Jays are really, really good at exploring issues where there are divisions between people. Um, and then finding, like acting as a bridge in, in order to bring those people together. So I, I think, uh, so the, the South African type association uh, types Nelson Mandela as INFJ. Some people disagree with that, but uh, outside of South Africa, but I figure the people in South Africa probably know him better. Um, and he was very much a person of principle and, and connecting like very diverse, uh, you know, in conflict, people in conflict. Um, and I think what, what the, the two, the two other things that stand out is one is that they can really surprise people by getting very technical and analytic. You, you know, people talk about like INTJ is like having this like soft gooey interior that people don't know about. Um, and don't often see, well, INFJ has this like analytical capacity that may go completely unnoticed in social relationships. And then people will really underestimate that and be surprised like, wow, where did that insight in technique or whatever it is? Still, there, there was a writing group I've been a part of since 1998. Um, there's, there's an award-winning, uh, you know, the people in the group and there there's like official like screenwriters guild people and so on. There's INFJ in the group. And um, I have learned every single time to trust her feedback, no matter what. No matter what my reaction is at the time, I just know, take it in, sit with it, because it always turns out her, the, the thing that she notices, this analytical observation, like, oh, you started this character thread here and then didn't finish it. Or, you know, you go in this direction with it, but I really think you need to go in this other direction that you would get a lot more and says why. And it's like very analytical, whereas my introverted feeling is like, no, but if it just like feels good and, and no, it's very spot on. And then the other thing I think is that INFJs live, is a general theme, live very idealistic lives and that's very stressful. And a lot of INFJs uh, report a variety of mysterious health problems, uh, which I think is the result of, it, when I say stressful lives, I don't mean necessarily that their own life and what they're doing on the face of it is stressful. What I mean is that because they're so receptive to the relationships and the energy of the people around them, the, the invisible energetic umbilical cords that connect people. And, and this is why some people say like, well, why is the INFJ so like door slammy is because from their point of view, it's like, your energy is like seriously affecting me. And they're not saying this in like some pretentious, like trendy way. They really mean like, no, your energy is like really negatively affecting me, like, and is going to ruin my life and stress me out. And I'm getting all of these like, you know, sensing feedback that says this is not healthy. Um, and whereas like for INTJ, there's much more easy, like draw boundaries and just be like, put up a wall. And there's like, it, it's a little bit like having the gloves in, inside that, like, what is it? Scientist thing where you like reach into the incubator with the mysterious alien creature, but you have protective gloves. INFJ is more exposed and, and is more empathic and more in touch. And, um, uh, you know, so they, they all have an element of uh, the harmonizing subtype, you know, because people, these aren't boxes, they're spaces, they're, they're facets, they're sides of the person. Um, and that oxytocin um, hormone, that, that touch activating hormone is something that's there, except the INFJ doesn't even need to touch people. They, they, they just need to be aware of them. And then the energy like comes in. I, I mean, this is what I've heard. I, I can sort of get it. Energy can almost be radioactive in that way where if you're around it, it'll actually impact you. So it's that trope where people talk about extroverted feeling of absorbing feelings from other people. So mm -hmm. it could be a part of that. All right. And so 
Thank you, Dario Nardi, for coming out and sharing your wisdom about the INFJ personality type. Everyone go check out his books. If you want to learn more about these subtypes, check out the 64 subtypes. Thank you for everything you do. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you as well. Thank you.